Okay, so I think we'll start. So basically, we're going to deal with uh, lower limb uh, few cases. The idea is just to create some discussion. There is no right or wrong answer or question here. Uh, basically, you know, uh, please volunteer yourself to come up and answer so that we don't have to pull up names. Uh, First of all, before starting, let me wish uh, Dr. Jis, who is the man behind all this show, very happy birthday. He was there in the world, he is still there, yeah. And uh, let's start. So I will share my screen and uh, the first few cases, uh, Jitin will take it. So, here we go. Yeah, Jitin. So we'll start with the first case. Uh, so who'd like to take the first bullet? Who's going to describe this x-ray? Anyone volunteering to take up? I can't find anyone. Okay. Varsha, go ahead. It's, it's a plain x-ray of uh, the knee joint uh, okay. extending from the distal one-third uh, femur and the proximal one-third of the tibia and fibula, AP and uh, lateral views of a matured bone. Okay. okay. What do you see? Um, I see a, for each case so that we can finish case. So be fast. I, I see a fracture in the lateral uh, condyle of the tibia. Okay. okay, describe the fracture. It's pretty close. Um, it's a depressed fracture, sir. Okay, good, excellent. Okay. Anything else you'd like to comment on the X-ray? Uh, widening of the intercondylar distance. Yeah. And I think, uh, I'm not sure it's not clear. The tibial spine, sir. What else? How would you go ahead managing the case? What's the next thing you'll ask for? Uh, I'll have to know the soft tissue condition and the neurovascular status of the patient. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. What kind of soft tissue damage would you expect in this injury? Is it what what kind of trauma is this usually classified as? Uh, classification, sir. No, usually what kind of trauma is this? A low energy or a high energy trauma? A high energy. Um, no, just lateral condyle alone can be low energy. Low energy trauma. Okay. Uh, so if you need to classify this, can you classify with the X-rays or would you want some other imaging as well? Um. With x-rays, we can do the Schatzka classification, sir. Okay. How do you classify this? Um, Schatzka what? Sir? Schatzka what? Schatzka uh, which type? Yeah, it's, it's lateral tibio with depression alone. So it's type 2, sir. So what's type three then? Okay, what are the imaging would you ask for? Um, CT scans. Okay, and, and why? What do you want to assess from the CT apart from the X-rays, apart from what you see in the X-rays? Or more importantly, that comes to our next question. What are, what are the drawbacks of the Schatzko classification and why do you need a CT? Uh, to know the, frag uh, the fragmentation of the articular surface. Okay. Which part of the tibia doesn't the Schatzko classification include? What information do you not get from a Schatzko classification? That's the question. Uh, the posterior condyle. 
Okay. So, so do you know any classification which includes that as well? Three column classification. Yeah, yeah, there's this three column concept. Yes. Uh, who did this class? So, sorry, sir. Everybody has to be careful. Who described the three column fixation concept? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, sir. Lu. Yeah, it's somebody called Lu. L U O. He described this in, uh, I think, 2010. Okay. So basically, you divide the proximal tibia into uh, medial, lateral, and posterior. And this, this will help you plan your fixation. That's why your axial cuts are important. So if you look at your axial axis scan, that's what he divided into three columns. That will help you with your management to plan your incisions, to plan where you want to put the plate. So what would be your management plan? Anybody else? Akil Junior. Vinay, can you pull up somebody? Yeah, uh, we have to. Yeah, please. Sir, first we have to uh, reduce uh, 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 opening, op after opening the fracture site, uh, we have to reduce the uh, depressed wait, wait, fracture segment. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, no. You're talking about management, correct? Yes, sir. So, what, what would be your principle of managing this fracture? Uh, Anatomy reduction and rigid fixation. Uh, yes, sir. Anatomy reduction and rigid fixation. Rigid fixation. Yes, sir. Why do you want to do that? For any mobilization. So, how do you plan your surgery? Sir, uh, first, uh, uh, I will make a uh, postlateral incision and first I have to reduce the fracture fragment. How do you approach? How do you determine your approach? Uh, so like based on the the way or the, do you need anything else also? Mm -hmm. By seeing the posterior environment. Yeah, okay. So let me tell you, we don't have a CT. This is just a split and depression. So you can, if you can see, you can on the lateral x-ray, you can see the depression there, correct? Yeah. The surface is depressed and there's a split and there's a depression. There's widening of the contact. Yes, sir. Okay, so how do, how do you, and the soft tissue is fine. So, Varsha told that they are, you'll be concerned about the soft tissue, you'll be concerned about the neurovascular. However, this is the lateral condyle, which is a low energy injury. Okay. So, okay, now sir. there are no bluffs, there is no swelling. Those are things you should be con concerned about initially. Right. So you would fix the intraarticular with what principle? Uh, condylar plating, etc. What, what stability do you want for intraarticular? Absolute stability. Absolutely. How do you achieve it? How do you achieve absolute stability? Butter, butter splitting. Compression in interfragmentary compression. Sir. Interfragmentary compression. Okay. What technique? Flag So if you can just tell that I would achieve anatomical reduction and achieve interfragmentary compression by lag screw technique, so you are complete. There is no question okay. point in asking different questions like that. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is butter split? Somebody talked about butter split. What is butter split? Who was that? Who said butter split? Sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, so, uh, buttress plate, uh, uh, it's, uh, it supports the fragment uh, on the uh, uh, compression side, sir. Uh, compression uh, side. Compression side. 
Then there is a sure deforming force. Okay. You want to counteract it. Okay. Uh, it gives you a support. Uh, there is a contour. What does it prevent? It prevents the collapse. Collapse. Can can somebody give an example of a buttress plate against the knee? Which you are using? Very commonly used. A uh, distal radius. Distal. Yeah. So if you get a volar like... button or a dorsal button, there is a carpus subluxage along with the volar or dorsal bit. You need to buttress the side where it, it is going. Yeah. So that's the most commonly probably the most commonly used buttress plate. Okay. So we discuss this. Okay. Who is going to do this? I'm going to describe the X-ray. Anyone? Any volunteers? Were the exam going pages? Nobody. So uh, this is the. Uh... Yeah. This is bottom here. So uh, this is an X-ray of the pelvis in AP view of the skeletally mature patient showing the fracture of the neck of the femur on the left side, which is uh, displaced uh, garden type three classic uh, uh, fracture. Okay. Now that you mentioned garden classification, can you elaborate a little bit? What are the types? How many? Uh, sir, there are. So there are four types. Uh, type one is valgus impacted. Type two is displaced but uh, it's angulated. Type three is displaced uh, but the head is away from the position. And type four, the head comes back to the original position and the, there is no contact between the uh, shaft and the head. So what? Uh, which? What anatomical structure did Garden use to describe uh, or classify these fractures? On the basis of what I seen displays. Head comes back and head is not in position. The pattern of the head and the acetabulum. Yeah, you look at the subacute pattern. Ah, it in fourth is the subacute pattern. In fourth, the subacute pattern comes parallel, sir. The in fourth, the head and acetabulum subacute pattern lines, sir, but it doesn't line up with the rest of the arm. But basically, you want to do this. Okay. Apart from the classification, anything else you would like to comment on the X, which would uh, determine your management plan? Uh, Asik, sir, uh, uh, arthritis depends upon the age and uh, the previous mobility of the patient. Yeah. Seventy-nine year old. Independent walker. Uh, so, since the patient is above seventy years old, uh, we can. If the patient is below sixty years, we go for the joint sparing. If sixty to seventy, we can decide. If seventy year old, we can go for the joint sacrificing surgery. What joint sacrificing surgery? No, so hey, yeah. arthroplasty or total hip arthroplasty. So how do you decide which one for this patient? Sir, so, so if the patient is high demand, we can go for the total hip replacement. If the patient uh, demand is low and life expectancy is less than ten years, we can go for the hemiarthroplasty. Excellent. So, look at the age of the patient. Correct. Sir, I couldn't hear. On the physiological age of the patient. Uh, not the neurological age. The patient physiological age is young. You would try to do a total hip, and if physiological age is high, you would do an hemiarthroplasty. Correct? Yes, sir. So in this case, she is a low demand patient, seventy-nine year old. What did you do? Yes, a hemiarthroplasty. So can you elaborate on your hemiarthroplasty? What sort of processes you would do? What are the types of hemiarthroplasty you know? 
cemented bipolar sir cemented bipolar why cemented how do you decide whether you do want to cement it or cemented or what okay the famous canal diameter is not not uh, a b or c okay uh, if if the patient is osteoporotic and uh, if the uh uh dorsal if it comes in dorsal c we can go for cemented sir uh it's it will have a stout pipe uh, uh, appearance where the cortex is thin in both uh, the left side uh uh 10 cm below sir at the isthmus region what is the so that's a canal flare index that's a canal flare index or dorsal classification you're right so let us Yep. Please go ahead. Sir, I have doubt. Uh, can't we go for the cemented even if the door A is there? Because this is the old age patient. Sure. We can try the cemented, whichever we are more, more familiar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any day you can go for cemented. But you should not go for an uncemented on a door C. That's all. You, I, mean, I mean, it will be difficult, no? Yes. Very difficult to get a good fixation in a door C with a and cemented implant so dos c right would be cemented implant in other dos other other types you can for you to decide and uh, cemented has a very really long uh, track record and uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong in doing cemented anything else so what are the drawbacks of any other dos Uh, so first, it's like if the patient is high high demand or living long then there is the chances of uh, pain on the acetabular side because of the wear of the metal over the native bone but uh, the movement is between the bipolar head bipolar component so how will how will the metal so the idea of bipolar is to Reduce the movement between the metal and the cartilage. Yes, but if the patient lives long or high demand, then the chances of uh, arthritis developing in the acetabulum. Okay, so the answer that should be is we found that after few months, the bipolar works as a unipolar. There is no movement occurring between the small head and the large head. Okay. Yes. No. that is why it works as a unipolar and once it starts as a unipolar you can have arthritis and then what will happen what will happen to the head atrocia step atrocia okay so that is that is the complication which you usually see that the head just migrates inside and there will be loss of bone hmm? so you should be choosing your patients very carefully when you are doing a hemiarthroplasty Any more doubts or anything else on that? Another thing is, uh, I mean, this is not a question. This is just a comment. So generally, if a patient's hip is arthritic, you will usually get a pertrochanteric fracture, not an intercapsular, because the hip is stiff because of arthritis. So it is it is very rare that you get a stable an, an arthritic hip. With a neck of femur fracture, you can go back and see or look at the cases that come uh, and forth in your hospital. You try to find an arthritic hip and an intracapsular uh, neck of femur fracture. Okay, let's go to the next case. Who is taking this, Vinay? Ah, uh, sir, Srinivas here. Srinivas, you can pull up. Yes, this 49 year old male patient presented to ED uh, with a twisting injury of foot. He was clinically examined and uh, X-ray of foot is taken. Can you make some diagnosis based on this X-ray? Mm. So should I try? Please, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so this is the X-ray of the foot in AP and oblique view. Uh, showing the fracture of the between the first metatarsal and its list frank fracture because the distance between the uh, first TMT and the second TMT has increased and it's more than two centimeters. 
टू मिलीमीटर सॉरी टू अर्ली इन द डे टू लुक एट सी दिस टू सेंटीमीटर इस टू मिलीमीटर सर सॉरी नो प्रॉब्लम योर आई are there any clinical findings so that you can make uh, a diagnosis of lis franks injury yes sir two things first we have to look for the plantar aspect we can see ecchymosis there and tenderness will be over the lis frank joint yes. yeah yeah true 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 that's true so do you know in a, so generally for a foot you take an ap and an oblique view do you know what what you look for in an ap view and what you look for in an oblique view uh so in the ap view we uh, we usually look for the first and second metatarsal and in the oblique third fourth and fifth metatarsal correct first and second raised in the ap view and 3 4 5 in the oblique oblique yes yeah yeah is there any radiological sign that you would like to uh it's a flex sign flex sign flat it's a small piece of bone that is evolved along with the ligament that connects the first and the second metatarsal so there is no connection between first and second metatarsal it's only first and metatarsal to the cuneiform middle cuneiform great so in so, case so the x-ray is not in, is not clearly showing some fracture how do you so we can what extra a, so we can take either the stress views or we can take a ct Do you want any other view of uh, foot? Ah, uh, sir, lateral view, and we can take the stress X-ray and take a or take a CT. Okay. What are the stress X-rays? Sir, what stress X-rays will you take? Ah, uh, sir, stress X-ray. Either if the patient can put weight on that, then we can take a weight vary. If the patient can't put weight put on weight, then we can put a knee block near the. Uh, just below the knee and allow the patient foot to drop with the gravity and then we can take a x ray so that is for an ankle fracture uh, you are talking about it not for a lis frank i understood what you are trying to say and i think that's the six phase for an ankle fracture to see the callus uh, shifting out of the mortis okay anyway go on so how do you like to manage this patient so since so this is a lis frank injury so we we have to manage the open reduction internal fixation because conservative most of the time doesn't give a good result okay internal fixation with what uh, so we can either use uh, low profile plate or screws in the crisp cross pattern or we have a star shaped plate from the arthrex for okay so basically what do you want you have two columns now how many columns do you have for the foot three now, columns three columns what are three columns then the first column is uh, the first metatarsal okay Two and three forms the second. Mm. Technically, we have to recreate the anatomy. So the first is we have to put two screws minimum. Once we once we reduce the medial column, lateral column gets reduced automatically. So we need not fix the lateral column. So basically, we have a column which is weight bearing and a column which is supple. Correct. Yes. So the, the weight bearing column has to be rigidly fixed. Yes. Yes. And the other column has to be given a supple fixation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So that's it. So you need anatomical reduction and rigid fixation of the weight bearing column, the supple fixation of the uh, non weight bearing column. Non weight bearing column. So you can. Good. So, if your CT scan and if your weight bearing X-rays are inconclusive, what what further investigations do you like to get? You can do an MRI. Okay, for what? Uh, to look for 
the chip or the ligament whether whether it's intact or disrupted most probably it will be find the ligament disruption there yeah by mri you find it out whether the lis frank injury is completely torn or is just a sprain injury okay and if, in case if it is just a, a ligamentous injury how do you manage this again the treatment principle should be same okay yes. so the, but the only thing is there is no bony fracture so there is a full of thought that it should be arthrodes yeah yes uh, uh, we are one big one school of thought is uh, primary arthrodes is for a ligament just uh, this right primary primary sir primary arthritis yeah but again it's a slightly controversial question so as long as you stick to the principles it's fine yeah people tell even uh, screw or mini profile plates yeah yeah that's still that's an accept that's a, again acceptable yeah that's acceptable as well yeah <laughs> yeah this uh, this x ray of a 47 year old male who came to the casualty following a road traffic accident can someone read this x ray so this is an isolated injury patient is stable let's read the x ray so this is a plain x ray of uh, left hip uh, sorry right side right side hip showing uh, right side of acetabulum and uh, proximal uh, femur showing subprochantric fracture right side okay do you want any other views of this x-ray of hello sir Mm -hmm. We want to describe a little bit more in the X-ray what has happened to the proximal. Displace the uh, lesser proximal. Would you want to describe what what are the displacements of the proximal fragment or what is the nature of the fracture? updated in external rotated sir okay okay so what is the definition of a subtrochanteric fracture flexed subtrochanteric fracture is the 5, 5 cm below it is intertrochanteric into concentric 5 cm or 3 cm whatever so it five look too high for a subtrochanteric fracture correct Yes, sir. it looks like a reverse oblique intertrochanteric fracture. Okay, it looks more of an unstable reverse oblique fracture rather than a subtrochanteric fracture. What causes the displacement of this proximal fragment? Erfan, let's try. abductors sorry so the abductors which is attached to the trochanter uh, trochanter and uh, external rotators okay uh, in the lesser the third deformity you are missing on uh, in the lesser trochanter so flexion deformity flexion flexion abduction extension rotation yes sir good so how do you want to manage this case go for a, a proximal femoral nailing sir are there any uh, other options of fixing this Uh, why, why do you say proximal femoral nail? 
సార్ ఇట్స్ అన్ అన్స్టేబుల్ ఇన్ ఇట్ కంట్రీ ఫ్యాక్టర్ సార్ సో వీల్ దీల్ రిక్వైర్ so what are the see when you man when you when you ask about management you know ideally you should say that i would stabilize the patient first okay i would need another view of the x-ray to look at the fracture geometry and you can also go ahead and say i would take a ct scan to see how the lateral cortex is you can see a small line going there correct yes sir so you need to know you should have proper data to give proper answer so you can actually ask for all these things so don't just go ahead and say i would do a proximal fibrillin okay yes sir so you want to do and so basically do you want to do an extra medullary device or intramedullary device it's a question intramedullary device right the the lever arm is shorter for a intramedullary device sir. so the uh, chance of varus collapse is less okay uh and also it is a load sharing uh, device good so what will be the difficulty in doing an intramedullary device you are I, i totally agree with you <laughs> so the uh, difficulty will be uh, that that can be a lateral cortex split sir. since the lateral cortex uh, thickness is less in this okay and if the canal diameter is less uh, and the yeah, anatomical if the curve of the femoral anti anterior curve is more it will be difficult for us to nail what is the most critical entry, thing entry point sir entry point will be difficult okay yeah very good what else the reduction reduction of the fracture excellent so how how do you how do you so the most critical part of uh, subtracanthic is getting a proper reduction so don't start with the proper reduction so what else should you do to get a proper reduction so how do you do this you will do it in a fracture table or with fraction table reduction with fracture table on fraction rule fraction fraction internal rotation what you, what do you internal rotate the limb ah uh, yes so what will happen if you give traction on this does it take care of the deformity of the proximal fragment uh, no. uh we have to we can use a sans sans spin we can put in the trochanter then we use it as a joystick to reduce there are multiple ways of achieving reduction uh and the key is to get a proper reduction whether you do it open or by close it doesn't matter as long as you your biological footprint is less okay so you can use sham spins you can use clamps you can open up the fracture site biologically without causing much of uh, damage to the soft tissue but ultimately what is one deformity you have to prevent valgus 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 or what is it what do you mean arus arus what what is the deformity at present sorry sir what is the deformity the at present varus sir varus varus so if we fit in the varus what will happen which is more biomechanically which is more sound a valgus hip or a varus hip for fracture uh, for uh, getting uh, fix for uh, getting union getting union nice. sorry valgus is more bi- biomechanically sound Yeah. So by all means you should prevent varus whether you can achieve valgus is a different question but by all means you should achieve 
Yes, sorry, you should prevent. Well, okay. So, I totally agree. An intermediary device is probably what is has to be done in such a case. But you should know the difficulties of that. So, yeah. anybody wants to comment on the fixation of this factor? Good, bad. Two to the fixation. So this is a case done by your, uh, not your friend, somebody you don't like. So please comment. So somebody spoke about load sharing, load bearing. Somebody spoke about the lever arm being close to the center of the hip. So you can, uh, you, you, you can talk about uh, relative the absolute stability. So put all these words together in the sentence and uh, somebody can answer. Yes, sir. Here, uh, the surgeon has tried to achieve uh, anatomical reduction sir, and rigid fixation. Uh, and uh, he's used an extra so, medullary. Yeah, rigid, is it a rigid fixation? If since the uh, number of screws is more become okay. Okay. yeah, so you're right. This is a rigid fixation that uh, they have used. It's an extra medullary device. Your lever arm is further away from the hip. Uh, so it's uh, once you use this, it's always a race. A race between uh, fracture healing and uh, implant failure. So, if the patient is lucky, young patient, good biology, uh, it might heal. Otherwise, most likely, this implant will fail. And usually, it will the plate will break just below the proximal set of uh, screws. The screws which go into the neck. Okay, so. Subprochantic fractures are very difficult. So if you are going to become an orthopedic surgeon who does trauma, you will surely have a failure in one of your subprochantic. Otherwise, that means you are not done enough. Why does it fail, the subprochantics? Uh, rotation. Muscle forces. Rotation is very difficult to control there. Okay, so you might be having problem reduction. What else? Muscle forces. What else? Anything else about this area? Cortical area, blood supply is less. Okay, sure. So there are multiple reasons why this area is a critical area. Okay. So this is not an ideal fixation. Ideal fixation would be an intramuscular device with a proper reduction. Okay, so I think Nishant is not here. But, uh, okay, so anybody wants to take this case? I'm sorry for the poor quality. This is something which we picked up from the net. So this is an. So just just describe what you see. Poor. Uh, what? Or you can make out this joint at least, so it's fine. So somebody wants to read the X-ray. This is the X-ray of the knee of the immature okay. joint. Okay. What do you see? It's a fracture in the proximal third shaft of the tibia. Excellent. So no neurovascular deficit, soft tissue is good. How would you manage this? Like a growing chain. What is the age of the patient? Say seven years. Old. So you can go for a trial of the conservative, uh, conservative plaster. Okay. So 
Okay. You're going for a conservative management. What would you uh, count so to the fact? So I would look like I, I I would look for the alignment and reduction if I can maintain it since it is a growing part of the bone, growing towards the growing end. So most probably it will remodel after. Okay. What will you be worried about, and what will you warn the parents about if you're going for a? Uh, I can I can tell them that there is always chance of loss of reduction and malalignment that may need a surgical fixation later on. Okay, that will need a uh, recorrection at a later time, either with the plate or we have to recorrect with the knee. But in pediatric, uh, do you really do open protection for these fractures? Because you said you know children have. I remodeling capacity, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Anybody else? Any long-term complications you would be worried about? This fracture is associated with uh, delayed valgus deformity. Good. What is this called? Called as a uh, Cousin's phenomenon. Okay. So this is something which all of you should know, because parents, you know, you would say that it will. No, you should counsel the patient properly. That even if the fracture unites, there's a chance that the patient eight valgus deformity. That's called a Cousin's phenomenon. So this is the same thing which has happened to this child. You can see the fracture is united, but it went on to some valgus deformity. So how do you manage Cousin's phenomenon? Or any angular children here. Where is producing osteotomy? First, we look for the limb length discrepancy, whether it's a limb length discrepancy is there or not. How how is the complaint of the child? If the, patient, if the child is fine, we can just do the observation and wait for the maturation. Okay. So first of all, you should see whether it is progressing or not. Correct. Yes. So, when would the deformity uh, progress? If there is still growth remaining. If there is still growth remaining, and if there is any involvement of the epiphyse, growth plate, yes. growth plate. Okay. Yes. So, what are the different ways of generally? What are the different ways of correcting deformity in children? Anybody heard of guided growth or eight plate? Eight plate is that any uh, epiphysodesis? Epiphysodesis is it permanent? No, we, we can remove the uh, that eight plate later. Okay, so what are you trying to do with the? You're just restricting the growth for a particular period of time till it uh, till the, the deformity can be corrected. So in a genuine algorithm, where do you put your uh, eight plate? Genuine algorithm is because the medial is still growing. Overgrowth on the medial. Overgrowth on the medial side. So you want to restrict that. Yeah. So did everybody understand? So this area is growing fast. So you have to restrict this area. So you put an eight plate here and allow the lateral side to grow. That would correct the deformity. And later on, you remove the plate here, and then the limb will start growing straight. Clear? Yes, sir. So you should know about Cosen's phenomena in proximal metaphysics. Very important because you may be seeing this patient in the trauma plate. And you should tell them that though initially it would be correct, with the chance of late deformity. Otherwise, the patient will completely blame you and there will be no medical legal issues. Okay, so who's next? Should I try something? Yeah, go ahead. 75-year-old lady 
who had a uh, hemiarthroplasty done seven years ago. She walks at home uh, without any support. She is otherwise fit and well. Closed injury and an accelerated injury. Uh, sir, this is a fracture of the left hip mm. with hemiarthroplasty. It's a fracture well below the stem. So it will be the Vancouver type C. Very prosthetic class. Yeah. Are you aware of any classification? So Vancouver, uh, Vancouver classification type A, B, and C. Okay. okay. Can you elaborate a little bit? Uh, so type A is above the stem. Uh, B is around the stem. B one, two, and three, and C is well below the stem. So B one is it's a Good fixation with a good bone stock. B2 is implant is loose with a good bone stock. B3 is implant is loose and poor bone stock. And C is well below the stem. Yeah, very good. Very good. So, so this is Ryan Cooper. Type C. Yeah, correct. So, so what? How do you go? How do you manage? How do you go? Ahead? Uh, so since we have to, it's like uh, since the fracture is well below the stem, with uh, fixation looks uh, good. So intra intraoperative we have to check for the fixation. If the fixation is good, we can Very just good. put a plate to support the fracture. And if intra intra intraoperative we can see the fracture the stem is loose, then we have to plan for the revision. So we have to do additional either CT scan or bone scan. To look for the position of this fracture, whether it's going up or it's just at the same level. Yeah, you are right. So you 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 need ideally you need a CT scan to see if your implant is loose or then your treatment quickly changes. So assuming this is the well fixed implant, patient didn't have any pain beforehand before uh, having this fall, was walking normally. Uh, so, how would you go ahead and uh, fix this? Uh, sir, if the implant is well fixed, then we can just put an additional plate to support. And if the... So, can you... Uh... Sorry? Uh, sir, was, was the question was that implant is well fixed or not fixed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, implant is well fixed. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, yeah. so if, the, if the implant is well fixed, then we can use the 4.5 uh, plate uh, with uh, at least we have to take uh, long spanning and with shorter screws near the stem and with uh, longer screw when we are in the distal part of the fragment. And we can use a uh, ten, uh, wire around that to support. Yeah, you're right. So for your uh, distal part of the fixation, you would use uh, bicortical screws. Generally, the rule is for uh, and uh, your tibia to try and get eight cortices purchased on either side of the fracture. So four bicortical screws, and for the proximal, you can use a combination of unicortical screws and cables. Okay, so. So your fixation should be, as you said, it should be long fixation. The plate should be as long as possible, probably starting from the tip of the trochanter all the way down to the flare of the contact. And span as much as possible. So another way of looking at whether the implant is stable or not is you should always look at the previous x-rays and look whether there is any... Okay. Yes. Okay, right. Who's taking this? Yeah, who is in there? I can see 29 people. Let me just call somebody. Who's Akil? Amal? Nobody. Samson. Uh, 
Hemos olvidado. ഫ്രാക്ചർ Uh, six. Why do you say six? Uh, there is no uh, uh, metaphysical, epiphysical, uh, uh, diaphysical, metaphysical uh, continuations. Sir. the lateral uh, tibial uh, plateau there is uh, depression sir uh, so, so so that's not so what is your immediate concern you look at this somebody sends you this x ray what will be your first concern yeah soft tissue injury compartment, compartment soft tissue and compartment exactly so uh, how do you make out if the patient has got compartment syndrome sure sure ma'am we will assess the pain uh, status of the patient sir whether uh, the pain is uh, controlled on immobilization and uh, controlled with analgesics and uh, assess for uh, uh, sensation movements of the toes and uh, uh, look for the uh, measure the girth of the uh, 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 muscles uh, of the legs serial monitoring of the girth what about pain so pain control with analgesics and immobilization uh with pain which is uh, uh, not controlled by analgesics uh, we should uh, suspect compartment sir so we have to look for the passive stretch as the five p's of the compartment syndrome pain paresthesia pulsnessness so you should stop with the first two p's pain and paresthesia okay So don't go for the other piece. So let me make it a uh, little more complicated. This patient has got severe head injury and is intubated. What do you do, uh, sir? We can we can look for the inter- differential intercompartmental pressure. If it is less more than thirty mm, then it it's likely to develop the compartment syndrome. How do you do that? Uh, we have the Mubarak's method. and uh, striker uh, striker we have a handle device to look for or we can put a needle through it and comp- and connect it to the sphygmomanometer and to look for the change pressure sphygmomanometer or or your uh, pressure uh, ventilator uh, ventilator the monitor sir yes so we can do that but no you should have a high suspicion because most of the patients well so I hope, is it always 30 somebody told 30 no so it may be more than 20 30 hypothetical so what what is what is happening so what will happen if when compartment pressure is if the compartment pressure is more than 20 mm of the diastolic pressure what will happen it can lead to compartment syndrome yes so not the 30 so if your diastolic pressure is less you know it will lead to pooling of the blood and that will increase the intercompartment pressure it becomes a vicious cycle and gradually your muscles become necrosed 
That's the first thing which occurs. So what else can occur? So what is compartment syndrome? What, what else can occur in such a fracture? Any other worry? Va vascular injury. Excellent. Excellent. So how do you suspect? How do you, how do you look for that? Uh, look for the pulse compared with the other sides. Uh, if you are not able to uh, get the pulse, you can uh, use a Doppler. Okay. Uh, and uh, still, if you are not getting, then we can go for a CT angio. CT angio. Okay. So you are in a center where there is no CT angio. You are in your center. You think the pulse is weaker than the opposite side. So that's a very important point that you have to always compare with the opposite side and see how it is. So if the patient is hypotensive, might have a weak pulse on both sides. So comparing with the opposite side is very important. That's true. point number one. And point number two, what else can you do to see? Uh -huh. so yeah. We can look for the suppleness. How supple is that? If it is becoming very hard as compared to other side, then it's like the compartment syndrome is developing. Capillary refill, sir. Capillary refill, you can see. See, so just because you have vascular injury doesn't mean the patient should have compartment syndrome. Both are different issues. You can have both together, but you know, you, just because you have vascular injury doesn't mean the patient will have a compartment syndrome. Connect the pulse oximeter to the tip of the finger. Okay. So, you heard about ankle brachial index. It's very simple. You can do it in a, in a center without CT angiogram. Yes, sir. Yeah, what is ankle brachial index? Sir, uh, we we measure the uh, uh, pressure of the uh, pressure of the lower limb and the upper limb, and uh, if, uh, if it's less than 0. 0.9, then we should suspect a, a vascular injury, sir. Or yeah, so very simple, right? You just put a blood pressure cuff around your calf, and uh, you take your ankle pressure. Same way, you take your brachial pressure. Divide. If it's less than 0. 0.9, you should be suspecting a Vascular injury. Yes, you can do it anywhere. Yes, sir. So, of course, uh, CT and GO would be the gold standard, but you should always do an angle break. And that should be your answer when somebody is discussing with you, not a straight away, a straight to NGO. Yes, so, you're suspecting compartment syndrome. What do you do next? Go for Fisher. Fisher. Emergency fascia for me with stabilization uh, with X fix. X external fix. Good, great. What are the picture to me now? Single incision, double incision. Okay. Uh, how many? How many compartments in the leg? Uh, 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 there are uh, four superficial and deep procedure. Four compartments. And anterior. Four. Which four? Posterior, there is superficial and deep. Lateral and anterior, there is one. Very good. Okay. So, so, whether you use the yes. two incision fasciotomy or single incision, what is important is you adequately decompress all the four compartments. Two so incision. Okay. So, we are almost this an hour since we started. Should we go ahead or stop it? Sorry? So what was the question? It's almost an hour since we started. Should we stop or go ahead? Your, your wish. Maybe if you are interested, we can probably take one or two cases and stop. Or stop for now. But you can be free to answer. You can free to answer. Your wish. Yeah, anyway, it's hamstring and iPad, which is answering, so no problem. You can pay, stop, or stop. What was it? You, you're stopping or not?
this is okay we will we'll stop this we will continue sir okay last one more case sir one more case okay last this is a, a posterior dislocation sir uh, of the knee uh, you can see the pucker sign by the antro uh, uh, by the lat uh, medial condyle is uh, medial condyle of the femur is uh, button hole through the capsule sir okay Uh, so this will it will be difficult to reduce. So we'll have to go for open reduction. Fine. So when you see such a patient, what is your what are your concerns? Vascular injury. Oh, difficulty in reduction and vascular injuries. Okay. Uh, based on the direction of this location. Mm -hmm. Who who described the classification? Any names? Uh, I think I think somebody called Kennedy. Can can I? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. We already described. We already described. Yes. Sir. So what do you want to do for this? We 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 need to go for a open reduction, sir. Ah, is it? We take a consent for open reduction, but we'll never know. You might get an exposure, right? Exposure, right? But as you said, there's a button holding that, so you should be suspecting that there's a possibility of not achieving a close reduction. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so I, I would say you are received, you are achieved a close reduction. Absolutely. Yes, Highly suspicious that the chance of getting a close reduction is less. However. I'm telling you, in this particular case, you under general anesthesia, you are able to get a close reduction. Then what do you do? Uh, we'll uh, so we'll give a rigid knee uh, brace, or uh, if it's stable, we we'll, we can go for a knee spanning X fix, sir. If it's so, if it is stable, what will you do? Uh, rigid knee brace. And uh, get an MRI uh, to assess the ligament status. Great. First of all, you should know whether it is a stable reduction or unstable reduction. So, if it is a stable reduction, you will give it rigid immobilization and monitor the pulses, angle brachial index. Okay. If it is unstable, then what do you do? Uh, give it a, a knee spanning and fixation. Need pass by any external fixation. So why 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 do you why do you say why can't you give an uh, knee pass uh, knee spanning even if it's a stable one? Any reason why you don't want to give a knee spanning external fixation? Because see, I, I would say that you no, know, I I'm asking for external fixation. I can fix the knee. I can fix the soft tissue. You can see when the pain is occurring. So. Do you want to counter? Do you have anything? To, you're right, but you know you should be able to say why you don't. Sir, uh, if we put knee spanning X fix, that will reduce the mobility, may lead to. So you're putting a rigid uh, brace. So anyway, there is no movement at the knee. MRI cannot be done. So that is one reason. That MRI will be difficult because nowadays, I mean, we don't use uh, uh, titanium uh, fan screws and you know fixators and things like that. So, uh, 
So getting an MRI is difficult because that is very critical in knowing the excellence. So that's one thing. Anything else? Knee stiffness, smooth. Knee stiffness is yeah. Knee stiffness but, more with external fixation. Correct? Why? Because uh, if the patient is on the X fix, we we usually don't do the mobilization faster, and the patient will be kept on the X fix for some time. Then we... so there comes the question: How will you put the planning X fix in such a case? You can go for the modular room. Where do you put your pins? Where do you put your pins? The spanning X fix. Any dislocation? Ideally, where do you put all? Where do you put the X fix pins on a femur in a spanning X fix? And anterolateral or lateral? Anterolateral or lateral? Yeah, anterolateral. So, so we don't want the pins to go anteriorly, and because that can pin the cordyceps onto the femur. Oh, so we would like to put on the femur. We would like to put it on the lateral aspect. Yes, it's okay. Yes. So we will not go into details about things like that. So the key is you should get a close reduction and check for the stability. If it is stable, you give a rigid immobilizer, get your MRI done. And if it is unstable, you put it in, put it on an angle span fixator. And then later on, you do MRI after removing your pits, say after three or four weeks. Okay, I think we will stop with that. Thank you very much. And hope it was useful. I'd like to thank uh, all my colleagues for helping me out on this, especially Vinay. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alex. Thank you, Dr. Srinivas. Thank you, Dr. Vinay. It was an excellent session, very long one, and I think all the participants have enjoyed it. And I thank uh, Dr. Divya for moderating.